Feels like a good one, Kay, to be honest. Um, I think he's schooled the right way. Obviously, you know, disciple from uh, uh, Cruyff and, and the, the performances that Ajax have, have been playing this season have been tremendous and seasons before, Champions League, etc. Also, is it Bayern Munich is Pep's number two or, or in the reserves, if you like, Pep's sort of assistant and the uh, Pep made sure that Ten Hag followed the, the, the same sort of rituals, the same system. So, reserve team players under Ten Hag would then go straight into the first team. So, he's trusted um so i think from from what i hear and what i've seen as him being a manager i think man united are going to enjoy his style i think mark's right though when he took, talks about the money side of it in terms of how much money of man united actually got to spend because they haven't they, they they feel or your perception feels like they're one of the richest in the world but they haven't got hundreds of millions to spend there's reports in the papers today over in the uk that they want to buy calvin phillips they want to buy declan rice for 120 million pound they want to buy Harry Kane for £100 million, pound, totaling about £250, £300 million. Pound. Man United haven't got that sort of money, so recruitment is going to be absolutely key. What are a club like Manchester United going to be expecting of a coach like Eric Ten Hag, Shaka? Um, I, I think they, they need to, well, not, not that they're expecting of Eric Ten Hag, but what's, what's needed for Manchester United is just a change in culture around, around who that football club is, how they position themselves, not just as a spending club, as, as, as Don was pointing out. Um, but you also have to, and, and this was one of Sir Alex Ferguson's great strengths, despite the money that he spent in, in reinforcing that squad and making it one of the best in European football, he never lost focus of the academy and bringing players through and, and having that, say, of the first team, either through directly through players or, or, or through sales. So you have to understand who Manchester United are culturally and, and how they've gone away from that uh, in recent years. And that's one of the things I like about Ten Hag, given his experience with, with Ajax. Listen, the, the easier choice would have been Pochettino, given his experience within, within the Premier League. But if you are, when you look at Ajax and how they do business, and I understand the open nature of the Eredivisie maybe doesn't serve well in the Premier League, but Ajax always brings players through. And having somebody who understands mm -hmm. that transition, moving players from, from academy into the reserves, in, into the first team squad, I think moves you in the right direction. Now you have to get that other recruitment side to it absolutely right. Um, and you have to trust that, that Ten Hag can, absolutely, can, can also do that. So I, I, for me, it, it ticks a lot of boxes in terms of Manchester United rediscovering who they are in positioning themselves to compete. It's not going to be immediate, but they have to get themselves back on that footing. Going back to what Mark was just saying, and the most damning in the statement was that Den Hag is trying to find a place in a football club that is run like a football club. Man, if that's the standard now for Manchester United that you're hoping that the football club is run like a football club, the standard is so incredibly low. But yes, that is the reality, and that is bare minimum. That is the lowest common denominator, hoping that you're walking into a job in which football decisions are the ones that benefit the football club, and that you keep those decisions outside of whatever financial decisions you make on the on. on in terms of investment in the club. Investment in the club should be first and foremost on the football side. And then the financial side takes care of itself because of the ongoing success on the field. They've gotten it the, all the way around, the wrong way around if you're Manchester United. And while I agree wholeheartedly with what you're saying in terms of the identity of the club and bringing players through, they also have to change what the priorities are. The team should be priority number one. And then, everything else comes with it. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.